India is the only major country not to have designed and manufactured its own conventional submarine. Now that's set to change now with the DRDO proposing a new Project 76 indigenous submarine design. This project is to go for approval before the Cabinet Committee on Security shortly. And reports suggest it will take the DRDO three years to design this submarine and six years to produce it, meaning the first unit would be ready in a decade. Joining me on the News 9 Plus show to discuss this new DRDO project is Vice Admiral Kane Sushil, veteran submariner, former CNC Southern Naval Command. Admiral Sushil, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Thank you. Good to be here. Admiral Sushil, you know, India has three types of conventional submarines, the Type 1500, the Kilo class and the Scorpion. We're going to spend over 1 lakh crore in the next couple of years on nine imported submarines of two different classes, the Scorpion and uh, six P-75I submarines. Aren't we spending a lot of money on conventional submarine programs? There's so many of these programs, so much of money. Break it down for us why this is uh, really required. Uh, the number of submarines which uh, are asked for depends on the force level projections. And uh, as you know that the 30-year submarine program talked about 24 conventional submarines, which was then brought down to 18. And uh, the, the, uh, the outline plan laid therein was never followed. And therefore, we've been getting in batches and pieces. So suddenly, we had the Scorpion program, which is coming to an end now, or already come to an end. And uh, it was supposed to have shifted to P-75I, which never took off because we were dilly dallying between whether you know we had the design or we should go here or there. It was an area of indecision. We just kept this whole program in a float. But there is no gain saying that uh, we need force levels, uh, whether it is 18 or 24, that is for naval headquarters to decide, and we are nowhere there. Most of our other submarines, which we had earlier, the 1500 and the, and the uh, Sindhu Ghosh class, they are all old and uh, the last legs. So, how do we quickly build up force levels? That is the key. And where do we get them from? Right. Where do we uh, get them from and how do we build up our force levels very quickly? But, uh, you know, Admiral Sushil, uh, we are talking about this new project, Project 76, which is designed by the DRDO. Uh, explain to our viewers what the challenges are going to be for the DRDO and of course the submarine designers as they design this boat. We've never designed our own conventional submarine for various reasons. But uh, tell us now what the challenge is going to be really. See, as, a, as, a, as a news item, it was very uh, welcome, and, uh, very encouraging to see that you know DRDO is going to go ahead with designing a submarine. But it's also at the same time very surprising, a bit confusing. Why surprising? Because uh, DND SDG, part of the naval headquarters the navy's own organization yes. has been in the forefront of submarine design as far as india, india is concerned i mean they have they were with every submarine program which india undertook whether it was the ssk program whether it was uh, the 877 ekms whether it was uh, arihan whatever uh, they were there and yet they have not come out with a design uh, you know, working within naval well, they were well aware of all the parameters which were required for a submarine, the QR which were laid down and, you know, uh, shared with all the other foreign, they had, uh, you know, access to all this. And yet, after so many years, we suddenly say that, oh, yeah, DRDO is going to design a submarine. They'll take three years to <coughs> design. And then, you know, another seven, eight years later, they will deliver a submarine. That is quite surprising. Why is it that we are still searching for a design when the Navy's design organization has not come out with that design? Right. So this is, uh, this is an important distinction, Admiral Sushil. You're saying that the Directorate of uh, Submarine Design is actually within the Indian Navy. And that is a separate directorate. And here you have the DRDO pushing a separate uh, design program. Why not combine the two? Exactly. What, what I'm trying to say is that the DND SDG, Directorate General of Submarine Design Group, uh, 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 Director General of Design, Submarine Design Group has been there. You know, they, they've been the ones who have been rising or training or even you know, people went to Lubeck far back in the uh, 80s 
uh, they have been St. Petersburg for various design work and they have been associated with all the programs, including MR. And yet, uh, you know, there is no design coming out of that organization. Next question is, why is it that when we have a design organization, yes. uh, why is it that we need a sanction to go and design? We could have designed it if you have the capability. Right. And if we had, we, you know, we had done our homework and we should have produced the design by now. And now to say that, you know, we go to the government, get a approval, and then three years later produce a design. That, that's quite confusing to me. It is confusing indeed, uh, Admiral Sushil. But, you know, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, explain to us the complexity of a submarine. Now, I was going to use the example of the Dhanush, which is an indigenous gun that was built using the Beaufort's blueprints, the FH-77B blueprints that were given to us by Beaufort's before it was blacklisted. And a couple of years back, the Indian Army worked with the Ordnance Factory Board, the then Ordnance Factory Board, to reverse engineer the uh, blueprints and produce a new indigenous line of uh, uh, artillery guns called the Dhanush. And of course, submarines are far, far more complicated than that. Uh, so give us an idea why, despite having the blueprints for so many years, we had the Type 1500 German blueprints, we had the, uh, uh, the Scorpion uh, blueprints that were given to us, and we have this bizarre situation of a South Korean company which took those same blueprints from the Germans, the Type 1500s in 1987, comes to us a few years back and offers the same submarine to us, a bigger version of the same submarine that we bought with the South Koreans four decades ago. The fundamental uh, issue here is that uh, right from the beginning, we are not been putting the building blocks together as it were. Now, for example, when the uh, uh, when the 15, uh, Type 1500 was in progress, uh, you know, two sub submarines being built in Germany, follow on two in India, uh, uh, there was an indication that we are going indigenous. I know there is a seriousness about going indigenous and ma making submarines in India. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we sent a signal to the industry that you know we are importing 10 877 EKMs. So the industry is quite confused as to which way do we go. I mean, where do we put our money? Will they continue with this line or will they go to uh, continue importing? So they were you know sort of keeping a distance and watching. So their involvement in you know progressing any other advance we needed were not there. Secondly, we looked at two different philosophies, and the Navy itself had its own views on these two different philosophies. One was the Western philosophy, uh, where they had uh, the Type 1500 uh, design, and the 877E game, which had two totally different design philosophies. People talk about single hull, double hull, and so on and so forth. That they had their own advantages or disadvantages. But the Navy should have chosen, if at all yes. we are serious about building, one of the philosophies or, you know, adopted a viable philosophy for themselves. There are many discussions which took place, but we never sort of zeroed in. What is important from submarine point of view is first is the selection of the material of the pressure hull. Right. Once we determine what the depths we need to operate at, what would be the general size of the submarine, we have to zero in on the pressure hull material. Once the pressure hull material is determined, whether we manufacture it in India or whether whatever happens, how do we work this pressure hull, which, which we call as normatives for working, you know, what will be the welding techniques, what will happen when you bend the steel, what, you know, various procedures which go yes. into the, the construction pro process, which then finally can be used in the design to say that, okay, finally we have a so the first and foremost thing was the pressure hub. Then came the internal system. In the internal systems, we had great advantage because we knew uh, systems from the west, east, and it could have just uh, done a uh, you know copy paste sort of uh, program there. Uh, for example, we could have developed hydraulic systems. Internal systems are much easier to sort of. Yes. But uh, when we design things for the submarine inside. We need to look at the uh, the environment and in which the submarine operates. And one of the crucial factors of the submarine is stealth. Uh, stealth, uh, so the pressure hull gives a certain amount of uh, uh, capability. You can coat the pressure hull to do some anechoic painting and you know all that sort of thing to increase stealth. But the machinery running inside the, the sink, are, many of them are linked, coupled directly to the hull. 
yes. and they radiate a lot of noise. So we need to have techniques which will suppress these noise. Uh, so those are the other important technology areas which uh, we need to look. For example, the diesel engines which are running to charge the batteries. How do we suppress the noise from going? So there are many techniques. Uh, the uh, the uh, West used, uh, you know, the uh, a frame which floated into the submarine and was decoupled. The whole machinery was decoupled to the hull. Only the frame was on, uh, you know, uh, shock mountings and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, Many of the uh, later on uh, Russian submarines followed the same principle. So these are sort of, uh, you know, uh, important aspects of design which go into um, finally getting the submarine to perform the way we want it to perform. Important uh, aspects. The, the other example, the other, yes. one second. Uh, the other example is the propeller design. The propeller is one which is directly on the hull and is rotating. So the propeller design is very crucial. Uh, you, you took the 877 EKM, uh, it ran at a very high speed, you know, uh, the propeller RPMs were very high, whereas the uh, SSK or the 1500 RPMs were very, very low. So you see how much importance they have placed on stealth and what was the technology levels of stealth when we got the 877 EKM from Russia. But you look at Chakra, it had a totally different uh, propeller organization, which was more akin to what the West was. So there are many technologies which go into this and these are the basic building blocks there are many technologies uh, and the basic building blocks uh, indeed uh, but you know my last question admiral sushil do you believe that you will be looking at an eastern uh, uh, submarine design for the project 76 will it be a western submarine design or will it be truly an indian design like we saw with the uh, godavari class in the 1980s where we merged the best of both east and west I hope we come out with our own uh, considered design instead of uh, going east or west. Uh, maybe we can go and uh, ask for a design validation, right. of, uh, validation of our design, you know, various parameters, calculations, etc., from either east or west. But what is the philosophy which you're going to put into our submarine? Uh, what is the best practices which you have learned from all these experiences which you have had? Are we going to put that into design or are we going to just blindly say that, okay, we just copy paste one design which we got and take it to somebody and say this is our design and then go on. I mean, that's the uh, problem which we need to sort out. That's the that's problem we need to uh, uh, solve, uh, Admiral Sushil. And thank you very much. You know, it's, uh, I was just reminded when you were talking about this expression of uh, it's not uh, rocket science could well be replaced by it's not submarine science because it seems to be as complicated and the issues that you've raised are as basic as the operational philosophy of these submarines. What is it that we want to do with these conventional submarines? And I'm sure and I hope indeed that all of these issues are considered by the DRDO as it takes up this Project 76 uh, design. Thank you very much, Admiral Sushil, for joining us this evening.